Arizona tea. Cannot beat it. All the OG fans of this channel remember this stuff. What is going on, Air Crew? My name is Andrew. Welcome back to a brand new exciting video. A week ago, or maybe a little bit longer, but I think I think it was a week ago, Sam Quarter posted his The Creative Process video and I reacted to it. In the video, I talked about Sam Quarter's color grading and how I strongly believe that he uses DaVinci Resolve to color grade his videos. A color grading video inside of DaVinci Resolve was by far the most requested tutorial talked about in the comments of that video. So today, I'm gonna do my best. My very best to try to break down Sam Coulter's color grading process inside of DaVinci Resolve. And color grading is really just one of those things where it's just, it's an art form. It's not like a zoom transition. There's no like three step process on how to color grade like Sam Coulter. That being said guys, I'd really appreciate it if you give this video a thumbs up. Let's see if we can hit a thousand likes on this video. That would be amazing. And without further ado guys, let's jump on the computer and start talking about DaVinci Resolve. Alright guys, so here we are inside of DaVinci Resolve. Here's what it looks like. Now the first thing I want to mention, if you guys are new to DaVinci Resolve, i just like to let you know that it is a completely free program. They offer the full version for about $300, I believe, but trust me, the free version is incredible. DaVinci Resolve is essentially the industry standard for color grading, even in Hollywood and everything like that, and pretty much all the tools they have in the full version are available inside of the free version as well. I might eventually upgrade to the full version, we'll see, but for now, the free version is more than enough. So the first thing that we need to do is we actually need to import some clips into our media pool. To import some clips, I'm going to go to the media Media tab and I'm gonna go through and navigate to where my files are stored now that I've navigated to them I right clicked and hit add into media pool and now I can go to the edit panel and we can just start chopping up these clips now if you guys want to integrate DaVinci Resolve into your Premiere Pro workflow then you can use things like XMLs to actually export your footage from Premiere Pro bring it into DaVinci and then round trip it back into Premiere Pro but that is an entirely different tutorial so in this case I'm just gonna go ahead and link some other people's tutorials covering that topic down in the description below if you guys are wondering how to do that just check out those tutorials All Alright, so now that I've got this footage, I'm just going to start going through and choosing some selects. This works extremely similar to Premiere Pro. You just select what you want and then drag it in. Alright, cool. So I've got these four different shots. And by the way, guys, as always, I'm going to have these linked in the description below if you guys want to download these and follow along. But once you've got the clips lined up in the timeline how you want, we're going to move from this editing panel, head over to the right, and go to the color panel. Once you're in the coloring panel, everything's probably going to look different. The main thing that's really going to throw you off is this little panel right here. So DaVinci uses a node-based grading system and a node-based compositing system inside of Fusion. The nodes are kind of difficult to explain. The best way to understand them is sort of just to mess around with them, but essentially the way I think of it is like a circuit. This is the in point, this is the out point, and everything in between sort of filters through and changes your image. Now the first thing I want to show you guys real quick is how to add LUTs to your videos. I'm starting to get into making LUTs, so I made a quick one for this video, sort of in the style of Sam Coulter. The LUT is completely free, you can download it below, I'm calling it the Legend LUT. I would never charge money for it because it is so far from being professional, but if you guys just want to mess around with it, there will be a link down below. But to add some LUTs, DaVinci Resolve has this really nice LUTs panel. So if we go over to this LUTs panel, you can see all these different LUTs that we've got loaded in. A bunch of these will actually come with DaVinci Resolve. So if we go to Sony, we can hover over and you can see it's going to start adding these different LUTs to the video. What I'm going to go ahead and do is add my Legends LUT to this panel and it's super easy to do. Just go up to File, go to Project Settings, Color Management, and then hit Open LUT Folder. I went ahead and made a folder for the Legend LUT and added it in right there. I can close that folder and hit Update Lists. And there you go. Now you can see right here we've got the Legend LUT. And if we hover over there, you guys can see we've got the LUT right there. I'll go ahead and drag it over and now we've got the LUT applied. I'm gonna go ahead and rename this the LUT and there you go that looks pretty good to me. So I just want to show you guys how to use the LUTs real quick but I'm gonna go ahead and delete this layer. I'm gonna go ahead and add another node by hitting Alt S on PC. I'll rename the node correction. I'm gonna drag this down and I'm gonna name this saturation and this was shot in the log format so we're just going to try to bring back in some saturation now a super important thing to make sure you do is bring up your scopes to bring up scopes i hit Control shift w on pc or it's command shift w on mac and here are our scopes now there's four different scopes we've got the waveform the parade the vector scope and the histogram for now for the saturation we're going to be using the vector scope and now there's two different ways to saturate your image. You could go down to this panel right here and just drag it up, but I've heard that a better way to do it is to go to the RGB mixer and drag up the red channel, drag up the green output, and drag up the blue output. And that saturates it up, and I've heard, I don't know if this is true or not, but I've heard that it's actually better for the image. And now I did that pretty quick, but if you look over at this vector scope, you can see sort of these dots on the screen. I'll go up to the controls and I'll make it brighter so you can see a little bit better. This is showing you how much saturation there is in the image. And now you never want the saturation 
to go beyond these squares right here. That means your image is oversaturated and you're starting to eclipse. So right here you can physically see the clips. We're too saturated and we're starting to lose some detail in the pixels. So what I like to do is go all the way up to where we start to clip and then just slowly drag it back until we have it as saturated as possible without losing any information. Somewhere about right there looks pretty good to me. That might be a little bit much for some people, but that looks about right for me. Now we're going to add another node and I'm going to name this node balance. I'm going to bring back up my scopes and I'm going to introduce a new graph called the parade. The parade is just the balance between the individual colors. When color correcting, you want to balance these three individual parades and sort of line them up so they look like one. Now I also want to look at a different graph so I can go up to the right and hit this dual mode. Now we've got two graphs going on and I can change the second one to the histogram and that's going to give me a better idea of what is going on. So what we can now do is head over to this middle panel on the color wheels and we can start using these bars to start messing around and try to balance this image. Now you can see that the blues are much deeper in the shadows than the greens or the reds. So we're going to go to the shadows, to the lift, and just bring up those blues. Something like that. Now you can see we've added some blues back into the image. The reds are a little bit high, so I'm going to bring the reds down just a touch. And then it looks like the reds gamma might be a little bit high, so I'm going to drag that down. And the greens gain might be a little bit high as well. So there we go, a more balanced base for us to go from. The next thing I'm gonna do is add one more node and this is gonna be the last node for color correcting. And this is just gonna be our luminance node. Here I'm just gonna mess around with the brightness and contrast. So I'm gonna do a bit of an S curve. I'm gonna drag the highlights down just a touch. That might be a little bit too contrasty for some of you, but I like a punchy image, so I'm gonna leave it like that. And then if you want, you can head over to the color wheels. And if you go down to this wheel right here and drag to the left or the right, you can see that's gonna mess around with our lift luminance. I'm going to bring that down just a bit. We'll go over to gamma and bring it up a touch. And then the gain will bring down just a little bit as well. And then to turn off all the nodes, you can hit Alt D on PC or Option D on Mac. So you can see we've already done quite a bit to bring this image back in, make it a lot more punchy, a lot more beautiful, in my opinion. And that's just the correcting process. So now we can move on to our grading process. I'm going to add a new node and you kind of want to mess around with your node tree, find what works for you. What I'm doing right here is sort of a zigzag motion. These four squares are going to be my color correcting and then down here, I'm going to do the same thing except it's going to be for the grading. I'm going to go ahead and name this node wheels and we can start messing around with these individual colors. I'm going to go ahead and name this node hue and I'm going to do a bit of messing around with the hues in the colors. Now, now it's a little bit confusing, but to go to the hue tab, you have to go to the curves, which is right here. And then you click this little dot right here and that's going to bring up your hue versus hue option. Let's say we want to change these oranges to make them a little bit more orange, a little bit deeper. You can either select two different spots in the map and then start bringing it up like that. Or if you want to be super specific, you can just go up and select the color and it's going to automatically tell you where that color is inside of this graph. And I'm not going to mess around with these too much. I think they're about the right color, honestly, that I wanted. I'm just going to drag it down just a touch. Cool. And then I'm going to go to this blue color right here, and I want to make it a little bit more tealy, a little bit lighter. Not too much, but just something like that. Now, if we go to the next tab, we can do hue versus saturation. And I want to try to get rid of this sort of purpley color right here. So I'm going to select it and we'll see if we can just drag that down. And there you go. You can see we're getting rid of that color. Um, it's not getting rid of quite enough. So I'm going to drag this over and that should extend the range a bit. There we go. That's getting rid of most of it. And then the final tab I'm going to mess around with is the hue versus luminance. And we can just select one of these colors here and we can mess around with how bright it actually is. I want to make this effect a little bit more of the image. Let's see. I kind of like that poppy contrast right there. I'm going to go back to that color and drag it down just to make it a little bit darker and drag it about right there. I'm going to go ahead and add a new node. I'm going to drag it underneath and I'm going to name this wheels. And we're going to do a bit of that classic Sam Quarter orange versus teal. What I'm going to do is add a little bit of blue slash teal. In the gamma, I'm going to go ahead and add some orange back in. And then once again, in the gain, I'm going to add back in a bit of that green. As you guys can see, everything is super subtle. You don't want to overboard anything. I'm going to add another node. We'll name this curves and we'll go over to our classic curves. We're going to go to our red and we're going to put a little bit of green into the shadows and that's going to blend with the blue to make it a little bit more green. We'll go over to the blue and we'll bring up the blue a bit. All right, cool. So I just made some slight tweaks right there. Nothing too fancy, but there we have it. And I think we are about done with this image. So here is the before 
and here is the after. As you can see, we've brought in so much more detail. We've added some blue into the shadows right there, brought some orange into these leaves. The Sam Corder shot that I think this kind of looks like is a shot of his hand over the fire. You can see he's got those blues in the shadows. He's got the orange of the fire. So that's sort of what this just reminded me of. Now, one super cool thing that you can do is if you want to sort of save this as a preset, as an instant LUT and apply it to your other shots, you can right click on the frame and you can select grab still. If we go over to our gallery, you can see we've added it right there. Now check this out. If we go over to this clip right here and we select it, as you can see, we've just applied all the information to this clip. Another super cool thing you can do is if you double click on this still, check this out. Now we've got what's called the reference wipe. Reference wipes are super important for color grading. It's really important to match the shots inside of your videos. If the color grading looks completely different from shot to shot, then it's just going to be jarring and throw your audience off. So this is a great way to sort of match the color grading to your shot. And when we drag over the still and drop it on there, you can see it adds in all the nodes automatically and we can start adjusting them. But if you want to turn off the reference wipe, you can go down to show reference wipe and just turn it off. And now one thing I do want to show you guys is how to track. This is probably the last thing we're going to cover, but I'm going to go ahead and add a node right there. I'm going to go over to this masks panel and we're going to add this circle mask right there. Um, we can feather it up a bit if we want. And now let's say we just want to make an adjustment and just apply it to the sun. We need to track it somehow because this is a moving shot. So we go to the frame that we want. We're going to go over to our tracker. Pan, yes. Tilt, yes. Zoom, yes. Rotate, yes. 3D, uh, probably not. We don't need to do that. We can just go over here and select track forward. And it does a beautiful job just tracking it through perfectly just like that. This isn't that difficult of a track, but still, that was practically instant. Um, we'll go back over a bit to about there and we'll track backwards and there we go. So now if we go over and we make adjustments, check this out. It's just affecting what's inside of that circle and it's already tracked. So I'm going to mess around with some of this, see what we can do. I'm going to add in a ton of orange. I'm going to add in some fiery red right there. That looks awful. The red looks totally jarring. But as you guys can see, we just tracked this so easily. And there you guys have it. That might have been a bit of an information overload, but I sort of just wanted to do an overview of DaVinci Resolve as a software. I strongly encourage you guys to download DaVinci Resolve. It's free and it truly is, I believe, the future of editing. I wouldn't be surprised if in like a few years, everyone's just switching over to DaVinci Resolve. And it's free. This is free. Industry standard color grading software, completely free. Blows my mind. If you guys end up using the Legend LUT in your Instagram videos, then tag me on Instagram at AndrewJMES. I post Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, and usually Saturdays every single week, so be sure to turn on post notifications so you never miss another upload. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really do hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.